Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's recipe, I'm partnering up with Grana Padano to show you how to make crispy potato stack fries tossed in freshly picked aromatic herbs and a generous topping of their 20 month age Grana Padano cheese to finish. All right, so let's dive in. All right, so first up, you're gonna grab some russet potatoes and lightly trim the edges so it can fit into your mandolin, unless you have the extra large one, you might not have to. Anyways, slice them about the thickness of an ID card or a credit card, depending on what you guys have in your pocket, uh, but just make sure you check the first few slices for consistency. So you're gonna finish up trimming the potatoes just to fit the baking tray a little bit more evenly. Then you're gonna transfer them to that baking tray, cover with aluminum foil. And this is kind of the trick that I figured out after tackling this recipe a few times, is that you can par cook these potatoes in advance to make life a little bit easier for large groups or events or if you're just making a large batch of these. Uh, but once that's done, you're gonna bake them in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 30 minutes until the potatoes are just slightly tender, but not mushy. When the potatoes are finished in the oven, you're gonna take them out of the oven, take the foil off, and roughly trim them into a rectangle type shape, then begin portioning out the stacked fries. Uh, just be sure to keep them relatively even when you're cutting, um, otherwise they'll finish cooking at very different times. As soon as they're portioned out, get a large pot filled about a third of the way up with a light frying oil. Canola, veggie, peanut blend, or safflower are generally pretty good, uh, but you're gonna get it up to about 375 degrees Fahrenheit and begin frying the sliced potato stacks until they're a solid golden brown. Now, right when they're done cooking, you're gonna put them into a bowl with a paper towel to catch any excess grease. All right, so now that the fries, all right, so now that the fries are basically finished up, you're going to season them with some freshly picked and chopped sage, thyme, and rosemary, of course, along with um, a pinch of salt and a generous helping of freshly shaved Grana Padano cheese to finish. And that's it folks, stack up the fries, top with a little bit more of the beautiful Grana Padano cheese, and your crispy potato stack fries are ready to go. All right guys, what's up? My crispy potato stack fries look very, very good. I'm very excited about this recipe. Um, ever since I first did the uh, crispy potato stacks a while back with my steak and potatoes, I've always kind of thought about making a fry version or some sort of stacked fries like this. And it just turned out exactly kind of how I anticipated. I feel like the, um, the size and getting all the size and shapes, that's obviously a little bit hard because potatoes fluctuate and you don't really want to waste too much, but these turned out amazing. I love the Grana Padano cheese effect going on. It looks so beautiful. I've had cheesy herb fries and a lot of different bar scenarios um, and you know nothing has ever really compared to these type of crispy stacked fries. So I'm really excited to dig in. This looks great. So let me dive in and um, have at it. Okay.
I almost wish I had like a like a truffle mayo or like truffle aioli to go along with this. But it's just it's packed full of flavor already. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, wow. Clearly there's a lot of different applications for the crispy potato stacks. The technique is um, it's just really cool to play with and have fun with the idea of slicing potatoes and using the um, that sliced effect for texture, aesthetic, and um, it's just a nice little thing to know about potatoes, I guess. Obviously, it's a little bit harder than making regular french fries, so if you want french fries, you can just knock those out like normal, but I feel like the, um, the sliced effect adds a really unique texture to these that are very different than french fries. That's why I love this recipe so much. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the recipe. This was very fun to make for me. I wanna thank Grana Padano for providing this wonderful 20 month plus aged wedge of cheese. This is a beautiful piece of cheese. I mean, I've been eating little chunks of it. And it's just rich saltiness to it. It's not too sharp or too mild. It has a really nice balance to it. So it's like a touch of acidity. It's really good cheese to work with. Goes amazing with pastas, different type of charcuterie boards, and um, you know things like this. So you know you, you can go from kind of highbrow fancy to whimsical, and play with kind of the balance of the cheese. Cool little fact about Granite Padano cheese is that this is actually one of the very few cheeses that is lactose tolerant, um, which I thought was really cool because you wouldn't really expect such a like full-bodied, rich, salty type of cheese to be a um, you know lactose tolerant type of cheese, but this. This is, so folks who can't eat those, um, you know, all the plethora of cheeses out there, this is one you can. Um, but again, I wanna thank Granite Padano for providing such a wonderful ingredient for this recipe. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you guys enjoy what I'm doing here. Check the description box for more information about Granite Padano, my equipment list, ingredients, and all that jazz. If you guys are interested, make sure you check all that stuff out, and I will see you guys next time with another recipe. Later, guys.